Hello and welcome to computer class. My name is Dave and today we're talking about computer security. So with this idea of computer security there is quite a bit of information out there. You could probably learn about this topic for um, weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, perhaps years, because there are entire jobs that are dedicated to the security of our data and things that are online. But today I want to give you a short overview kind of of maybe personal protection but also what are the things that protect us on the internet and then finish off with how can you protect yourself online. So let's start off with what is a firewall. And there are kind of two types of firewalls that are out there. And these are physical pieces of hardware. They're actual like devices as you can see on screen um, one is kind of like a router here I will turn on my um, laser pointer here one is kind of like a router that it has sort of a built-in blockage to it it's the first line of defense when you get to your house and we would call that a personal firewall a security tool that detects and protects the personal computer and its data from unauthorized intrusions and there are also lots of different pieces of um, devices that you can buy that can connect with your router that also provide a layer of protection as well. And then there's something called a uh, hardware firewall and that's a little bit of a step up I would say. It's, it's a dedicated piece of equipment that a person can buy that goes right as the internet connection comes off the road. There's like a, an ethernet cable that runs, I'm sorry, there's a coaxial cable usually or fiber cable that runs down the road and it connects to the building that you're in. And when it comes inside, it's usually a black cable and it will connect directly to your router, which you can see on the screen right here. And then off of that, sometimes people, if it's a big network, if it's a big um, building, they will have uh, some sort of a firewall, a hardware firewall, something like this type of a device where it's, it's a device intended to stop network intrusion um, before it can affect computers on the network maliciously. Now many routers, like I said, have this built-in tool, have this built-in software, so to speak, but they're just not up to par when it comes to blocking things in the corporate world. And so many companies use huge uh, amounts of um, of protection. They pay thousands and thousands of dollars a month to protect their networks with these hardware firewalls. All right. So that being said, that's kind of a device that can be used to block things. That being said, who would try to breach your network and try to um, destroy your computer? And that person would be a hacker. Now, there's there's a couple types of hackers. There is uh, there's red hat hackers and there's black hat ha black hack hackers black hat hackers that is really hard to say <laughs> uh, the black hat black hat hackers if I could talk are obviously malicious and trying to destroy things and then there's white hat and they are good they're people that are trying to do um, penetration testing and they are they're hammering the network or trying to breach the firewall in order to see what is it made of and how can it be protected. It's actually a job. And anyone who is intruding on a network should first have the written permission or a contract with that company if they are doing intrusion protection. And so, again, no one should ever, by any stretch of the means, hack a network or do th something malicious to someone's network because it's a crime. You can literally be sent to jail for it. Um, but then there are people that are red and they kind of switch either way like they sometimes do good stuff and sometimes do bad stuff is how i understand it but i mean if you're hacking a network let's just say first of all that, that is wrong um and it again can be punishable by um by prison time and or depending on what what happens and or fines massive fines so who would try to breach a network? Someone known as a hacker. Again, if someone is trying to breach a network for the sake of testing it, they would be known as a penetration tester, as a bonus there. And then what would the hacker use to try to penetration test? 
the virus. It's a computer virus is potentially damaging computer program that affects or infects a computer negatively by altering the way of the computer, uh, the way the computer works without the user's knowledge or permission. So that's a pretty important definition there. Um, it, the key is that it alters the way the computer computer works without the user's knowledge or permission. So usually something's going around in the background of the computer, kind of just working and collecting information and the user has no idea that's what's kind of frightening about viruses and then suddenly something goes wrong or you may never know it's there and so you know <laughs> how do you know if you have a virus well i'm going to kind of show you some things in, in a, a couple slides but uh for right now what are the types of viruses uh the first type is is malware and this is more of the ones that infect okay malware is short for malicious software meaning software that can be used to compromise computer functions steal data bypass access controls or otherwise cause harm to a host computer and so you'll see um, malware bypass things is more more of the better way of saying things and steal data it's kind of a uh, kind of a malicious software. Here we have the picture of the skulls on screen. Typical thing someone might try to hack and put up there. Um, moving on to a worm, a worm resides in the active memory of the computer and replicates itself over a computer network um, to infect other computers and devices. So one computer gets it in its memory and then if that computer is allowed to stay running, which most people leave their computers on, and again, that's not really normally a problem. It's just since the computers are on, it starts replicating onto all the systems around the network in the active memory. And so the fastest way to shut down this type of virus is just literally, you know, unplug the computer and unplug the Ethernet cord. Which is, by the way, a lot of ways to fix a virus if you take it off the Internet and get it off the Wi-Fi or whatever and then turn it off, the attack usually stops. Side note. Trojan Horse is a dev uh, destructive program disguised as a real program, such as a screensaver or a little icon on your screen, whatever. It's innocent. It's kind of like, you know, Troy, the Save Troy pulled the Trojan Horse inside and then bam, it released, you know, all these soldiers in the middle of the night into their town and destroyed it. Same thing with the Trojan Horse. Uh, basically, uh, you click on something or whatever. Um, it's it can be hiding on your computer once launched, then it can capture information such as usernames and passwords from your computer and enable someone to even remotely control your computer, which is super scary. At that point, they could look through your webcam and um, unlike viruses, the Trojan horse doesn't replicate itself. So it doesn't really like normally go copy itself onto another machine on the network, not like the worm does, uh, but it's more of uh, something I should have mentioned in the beginning, though, I forgot to say it, malicious software is more of a category of software. It's like an overall title of what we call this types of software. And here are the individual divisions, Worm and Trojan Horse and Rootkit and Ransomware. Okay, So a, a Rootkit is a program that can easily hide and allow someone to take full control of your computer from remote location, often for nefarious purposes. So same idea kind of as the uh, Trojan Horse, a little bit different, but similar idea ransomware is a type of malicious software from a um, crypto however you say that word <laughs> virology that threatens to publish the victim's data or perpetually block access to the data unless a ransom is paid so they'll contact the person who they've hacked and say hey you know that like thing we have over top of your screen that you can't see anything now on your computer. They'll do this to like hospitals who need to get to important data about clients. They'll do this to people who run um, financial systems. They'll say, hey, if you ever want to get your stuff back, if you want to be able to access your computer again, guess what? You're going to have to pay us $1 million or $100,000 and companies pay that and then they don't even remove it anyway. Right. They, I mean, like, what's to say they'll actually do it if you pay them? So it's just a nightmare scenario because the ransomware is now on the computer and you, you literally can't get it off unless um, you pay the ransom. And they remove it, of course, or something like that. Um, but that doesn't mean you necessarily should. Sometimes there's negotiation that needs to go on. Definitely the, the uh, authorities need to be involved. This is a high level crime. If something like this is going on. Um, this is the big guns like people are really trying to hold up an entire organization sometimes for a political gain or sometimes for 
um, financial gain is more often than not when this happens. All right, so that's kind of the types of viruses under um, malware. Uh, then we have, lastly, bots. Bots are software programs created to automatically perform specific operations. While some bots are created for relatively harmless purposes, such as video gaming uses bots, um, uh, you know, certain types of um, companies troll the internet with bots trying to find out information on people so they can sell things to them. I uh, kind of like, I think Amazon kind of does this. Facebook finds that information about you, but internet auctions, online contests, etc. They become increasingly common to see bots used uh, maliciously sometimes, though. They can be used, and bots can be used and called botnets. It's basically a collection of computers to, to be controlled by third parties um, for something called a DDoS attack. And basically what they'll do is they're trying to um, have all these computers send all these requests to a internet server and internet servers are computers that host websites and so as the requests are smashing into these websites constantly sending requests to them the server overloads it doesn't have enough memory and or space to handle the constant requests for certain things and DDoS um, it, it just shuts down and crashes the server and um, the website is now offline. So that's the idea behind a DDoS, DDoS attack. And um, basically renders advertisements on websites, uh, you know, website spiders, whatever. It contributes to the destruction of them. Uh, so anyway, so they can, bots can be used for good things and they can be used for bad things. They're kind of that hybrid piece of software. And some people are using it for good, some people are using it to literally just crash everything, which is a terrible idea. And so you can see the website where I got this information from right there at the bottom. Next we have adware, which is just more of, it's not like malware. Malware is very malicious, but like adware is just straight up annoying, okay? And just, you should be very careful about it still, but it's just somewhat annoying. Adware is a program that displays an online advertisement or banner or pop-up window on web pages, email messages, or other online services. Can be sent to you in your inbox, your email via spam or something like that. Um, can pop up on your screen. But if anything pops up on your screen, shut your computer down immediately um, and unplug the internet cord or get it off the Wi-Fi, whatever. Just just don't click whatever is popping up on screen. You know, congratulations, you've won a million dollars. You're the hundredth person to visit this site. No, you didn't. It's a lie. It's a joke. They're totally lying to you. Okay, so anyway, that's what adware is. So types of adware that are out there, there's spyware, it's a program placed on the computer or mobile device without the user's knowledge that secretly collects information about the user and then communicates that information to someone outside source that's still online. This could be a vendor, it could be someone like you install, for instance, some sort of a browser uh, extension and it's like collecting information about what you're buying online and stuff but it could be even further and be very malicious to where someone's collecting so much information about you that they're actually spying on you um, some like a government agency could do that so it can be malicious it just depends adware can be really bad but it can also be like pretty benign spam is an electronic sending of mass unsolicited messages really just picking uh, rainbow tables of random emails and just blasting out these uh, like malicious emails that if you click the button it just downloads a program on your computer and then if you accept that download and and install the program well then they have control over or or launch a virus on your computer the most common medium for spam is email interestingly enough but it is not uncommon for spammers to use internet messages text messages blogs web forums search engines social media and um while spam is spam is not actually a type of malware, it is very common for malware to spread through spamming, which is why I put it into the adware section because it's more stuff that annoys than it is stuff that is malicious, but still can be malicious because usually malicious is connected connected to in some way the annoying side of things. Signs that you have a virus on your computer. Some of these are pretty funny actually because like. I've been hacked several times. I know. The computer guy has been hacked. I get it. I know. You're like, what? 
how how did that happen <laughs> well uh, you know uh, it happens to everybody i know no i know how to fix it but a lot of people don't um and um you know a lot of times i'll just you know either a wipe my computer if it's really bad or, or b back it up whatever I, you know part of that is you got to be careful what you're doing and sometimes when you're doing a lot of computer it stuff you can get hacked if you go on sites that are a little bit shady to download ISO files <laughs> for operating systems. And again, I don't recommend doing that. I'm just saying sometimes you can get hacked. And here are some of the signs that you have a virus. An unexpected pop-up window just comes up and never click on unexpected pop-up windows. Even if, even if it says virus is detected, just, just shut your system down, like completely shut it down and get it offline because that's, again, the fastest way to stop a virus. Slow startup and performance. Now, that doesn't always mean just because your computer's slow starting up performance. We're going to talk about computer parts later on in this course. And sometimes you just, it's just the combination of hardware you have. For instance, if you have like an i3 computer with like four gigs of RAM, like really low end computer, laptop, it, it will take a long time to boot up just by nature of the PC is terrible. Okay, <laughs> to be kind. All right, but um, that doesn't mean, okay, so sometimes it's a hardware thing, but sometimes it's just that the computer's memory is so full because of all the stuff that's running, virus type stuff. And um, so it could mean that you, the slow start and performance, you may need to look through your control alt delete and find out what programs are going on and maybe shut some of those down or find out, is there a big massive, I had someone like come to me and they were like, hey, you know, my computer's running really slow. What's going on? It takes forever to boot up. And I looked and there was this massive folder on the computer it was taking up the entire hard drive. And I was like, oh no, there's totally a virus on this machine. And there was, it was, it was a massive problem. And it was just launching around the network, like a big problem. So just if your computer's performance like really slows down, sometimes it's good to be searching like, you know, and your hard drive starts to fill up in random jazz like that. You know, if you open control to delete, which is start, man, uh, which is your, um, your task manager, and you notice there's like a billion programs running and it's like topping out your computer's CPU usage, kind of like I talked about in my Windows 10 hotkeys and stuff. <laughs> then that's a problem. Like there's some sort of something running on your computer. Number three, suspicious hardware activity. Like I just mentioned, you know, your your computer shows the hard hard drive is running at like 99% and the processor is running at like 99% and your task manager and your computer's hard drive is completely full. All of a sudden, randomly, you had like half of it left and then poof, it's full. You know, something's up. Now that could be, I've seen this happen. It could be your virus protection software. And we'll talk about that in a second. But it might also be the fact that you have so much crap running, which could be a virus. Lack of storage. If you suddenly find yourself devoid of storage space on your computer's hard drive, uh, you know, that might be an issue too. Okay. Missing files. Some malware causes problems by deleting files and moving them around. That's actually hilarious. You can imagine you're like, oh, my files were just right there. Where did they go? You know, <laughs> they're just over in this folder. I would, if, you know, I'm not a hacker, but if I would, <laughs> that's hilarious. Just moving people's files around, you know, uh, playing with them. Of course, the people that are doing this have a sense of humor too. So they're, they're probably fooling around with the people as well. <sighs> First of all, that's just mean, but secondarily, um, you know, what in the world? If you delete someone's personal data, I can't tell you the agony it causes them. They've done all this work to make something, and then you just, like, move it around or delete it or whatever. Like, shame on you. But anyway, uh, crashes or error messages. So if a program starts up and then closes automatically, leaves an error message, your system just freezes completely. Uh, shuts down, blue screen of death, uh, error messages, virus infection, uh, you get a, a weird screen crossing your screen um, that you've never seen before, that type of stuff. Probably an indication of a virus. <laughs> okay. High network activity. If your internet connection is very active when you're not using it, which could be really weird if you monitor your um, 
your network a little bit. And then there might be a virus sending information back and forth across the internet. If your email is hijacked, you start receiving emails or instant messages from your social media links asking you to click on attachments. If your other accounts are sending you in like like requests for you to click something all at once, that's a big indication you've been hacked on one of your social media accounts or something like that. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to do something called social engineering. They're trying to get into your main account, which is your email, attach to those social media accounts. And so they're trying to one at a time overtake, kind of like storm the castle. The first line of defense is uh, they got into your social media account. So you should sign into those and change the passcode um, on a different computer, not the computer you're on. <laughs> uh, but once you turn, sign in and change those passcodes, don't just click all the stupid emails that they sent to your and approve them that they sent to your default email address for those accounts. Because if you start doing that, you will give them um, basically control over your social media accounts and your digital life. And so, so slowly you will sign away that. So you got to be really careful. This this thing is known as social engineering, and people do it all the time. Once they you know, access your social media accounts, then they get the email address associated with your email accounts, and then they can use that email address to sometimes get into stuff like your Amazon account or other accounts that you might have, which actually have money attached to them, and that's, again, what their goal is. So, anyway, uh, or, or maybe they're trying to get into an iCloud or something that you have, uh, a backup of your phone, which could have personal information or something like that. So anyway, if your friends start receiving emails from you or maybe Twitter messages or, you know, your your social media accounts post something very inappropriate it, and it wasn't you, then know that you need to change the password to your accounts and your email is either hacked or your social media is a hack. Just change all your passcodes. That's that's the fastest thing on a different device, assuming because assume that device you're on could be compromised. Number nine, an unusual sound or music will play. This one always gets me. This is so funny. Like, it just plays out of your computer. Uh, or a setting will randomly change to where your computer will, like, blink and stuff. It's, <laughs> I've seen weird stuff happen. Uh, somebody was like, yeah, randomly these sounds keep playing on my computer. It's like, okay, yeah. I remember coming to a computer, like, someone called me down uh to to fix it and literally someone was on screen moving around the mouse and clicking stuff and i went to shut the computer down and as I, my finger was on the button the screen just like everything in windows 7 got wiped and that person just cleaned it's like they realized that i had touched the mouse and they cleaned everything off the computer all the data was gone the computer was wiped and when it came back up it was just a blue screen it was gone like i don't know how that's possible but it is somewhat possible to hack very well. I think they just deleted the computer's registry, to be honest, or something like that. But yeah, it is very possible to have an active hack going on, and you come up on it, and you're like, oh, uh, my, uh, you know, unplug the internet cable as fast as possible, power down the machine. Yeah. The computer's RAM or memory is full, causing programs to open extremely slowly, often crashing them. I kind of already talked about that, but... Um, Certain programs can be big and bulky, and when they're infected a little bit, you know, they cause more. Programs use the active memory or the RAM they're loaded into. That's why when you shut down your computer, um, the the uh, anything you haven't saved is is wiped because it's it's not in hard memory. It's in kind of this soft memory or um, active memory or uh, RAM, random access memory that is used on boot up to load the programs. Uh, and so if you find that your RAM is extremely full, it could be that you have some sort of virus sitting in that. So that being said, how do you combat these problems? Uh, antivirus protection software is really um, where I think protection starts to begin. Um, basically, it protects your computer against, and this is a pretty important definition too, it protects a computer against viruses by identifying and removing any computer viruses found in the memory, storage, media, and incoming files. And so you can basically open this piece of software and run a scan of your computer if you think you've been infected, and it will try to find these things. Um, and then it will clean them up and quarantine them to a, um, to a, to a uh, segment of the drive, and then you can choose to delete them, which obviously you would. I mean, like, who would not? Um, so here are some virus protection software um, examples out there. I'm not saying that this is all of them. There is more than this. 
these are just the ones that I have talked about in the past. Um, for instance, AVG is an example of this. Um, AVG.com, here are all the links to them. Uh, Avast is more Mac security, but I think they also do PC now. Norton 360, I really don't recommend Norton because it's just so ridiculously clunky on machines, but you know, whatever suits you, or Mac V either. Um, I think it's Kapersky, is how you say it. I could be saying that completely wrong. Sounds Russian to be honest, but I have no idea. My favorite is Bitdefender. Um, I've I run that for years on, on machines. And that's not to say that you can't use Windows Defender. Actually, Windows has its own built-in virus protection software. And if you keep it up to date, it's very good at protecting one. But if you're one of those types that's always using Wi-Fi at Starbucks or Wi-Fi at which I don't recommend going on public networks by any stretch of the means. But if you are one of those people who's like a coffee shop person where you have to be on your coffee shop, I definitely recommend having a virus protection software on your Mac or PC for sure. Get Bitdefender, put it on there, um, and you know, be safe. Okay, use a VPN or something when you're connecting to the internet. Uh, then there are some PC cleaners, some stuff you can run to just keep track of your internet's performance, uh, not internet's performance, computer's performance. And these two such programs might be Malwarebytes, which again, here's what it looks like here, and then CC Cleaner, here's what it looks like here. And it kind of uh, deletes internet temporary files, cookies, history, lots of things, and recent, um, maybe even, even downloads of previous version of uh, Windows updates, which will get saved on your computer. It's just, just bloat that kind of just sticks into the files of your computer. It kind of cleans all that out. They're nice cleaners. They get your PC performance up and running really quick. This is a video I'm going to link down in the description about Bitdefender Box, really helpful piece of hardware that you could use to protect your computers in your house. So I'll link that down in the description. You go watch that. And then... Here is some ways to um, uh, for malware prevention and removal. So I would say keep your virus protection software up to date. Uh, install or run anti-malware anti and firewall software. When selecting uh, a software, choose a program that offers tools for deleting, quarantining, and removing multiple types of malware at a minimum. Anti-malware software should protect against viruses, spyware, adware, trojans, and worms. If not, um, also the one I mentioned earlier, uh, known as ransomware, it should protect you against that too, because that's a very relatively new virus. Okay. Number two, keep in uh, Windows up to date. So Windows has these patches. Windows 10 has these patches that come out like literally every week. Um, so sometimes even sooner than that. Uh, just just make sure you're installing the patches because they are security updates that help you be safe online. Be careful, be vigilant when downloading programs, files, attachments um, that are unfamiliar from a source that you don't know. And then here are some ways to keep yourself safe online. I got this from Kapersky's website, so some of these are overlapping, but I do want to read them because I think they're so important. You should keep yourself safe online. Seriously, like you can get into so much trouble online and you can also get into um, there are nef nefarious people out there who want to take information from you, even do bad things to you online and physically in person if they can catch up with you because there's some weird wacko people out there. So just keep yourself safe. And these are some of the tips that a professional virus protection software company has for you as a student. Um, so anyway, keep personal information professional and limited Potential employers or customers don't need to know your personal relationship status or home address. Um, yeah, turn all these settings off so that no one can see them on your social media accounts. They do not need to know about your expertise, professional background, how to get in touch with you. You wouldn't hand purely professional personal information out to strangers individually. Don't hand it out to millions of people online. Seriously, that is that could not be more true. I see teenagers and their uh, accounts are just wide open, anyone can see a picture of them or whatever, absolutely not. Turn all that off on private. Your account should be set to private for sure. Keep your privacy settings on on your phones and devices. Marketers love to know about you and so do hackers. Honestly, that's so true. Both can learn a lot from your browsing and social media usage, but you can take charge of your information uh, as noted by Life Hacker. 
both web browsers and mobile operating systems have settings available to protect your privacy online. So check into those. Major websites like Facebook also have privacy enhanced settings available. These settings are sometimes deliberately hard to find because the companies don't want your personal information uh, for, they want your personal information for its marketing value. Make sure you have enabled these privacy safeguards and keep them enabled, okay? If you have any questions about that, hit me up and I will send you information. But seriously, um, turn your settings so that everything, privacy settings are on on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever you're using, okay? Make yourself um, have these settings on so that you're, you're protected, okay? Seriously. Practice safe browsing. You wouldn't walk through a dangerous neighborhood. Don't visit dangerous neighborhoods online. Cyber criminals use luring content as bait. Uh, they know people are sometimes tempted by um, content and may let their guard down when searching for it. The Internet's... Um, what is that word even? Demi... Okay. It's filled with hard-to-see pitfalls where one careless click can expose personal data or infect your device, both malware, but resisting the urge, um, you don't give in to the hackers or even give them a chance. And so, uh, it's just so true. Just, there are certain sites you can tell they're sketchy. Um, seriously, do not go to sites. Don't just start Googling random words that you think are funny to Google or just smash down on the keyboard. No, keep yourself safe and deliberately go online to Google something. And that's it. Number four, make sure your internet connection is secure. Uh, if not, use a secure VPN and the VPN settings, by the way, just so everybody knows, on a Windows PC are down here and um, right there, VPN settings. And also some virus protection softwares have a VPN built in and you can turn that on and connect. Basically what a virtual private network is, is it's, it's kind of like a tunnel that it creates and anytime someone tries to look at the information or the tunnel it collapses and goes around and creates another tunnel so that you know you're always protected everything you're doing is safe and no one's looking at what you're doing um, for example when using a public Wi-Fi connection PC mag notes you have no direct control over its security corporate cybersecurity experts worry about the endpoints the places where the private network connects to the outside world and so you can be really vulnerable on these public networks so just be careful make sure your internet connection is secure be careful what you download uh, a top goal of cyber criminals is to trick you into downloading malware programs and apps that can carry malware or try to steal information this malware can be disguised as an app um, something as a popular video game or something that tracks the weather for you or whatever just be careful when someone says do you want to install this this bar into this you know helpful bar into Google Chrome just just click no you don't want it okay choose strong passwords I try to use uh, passwords that are uh, over 10 characters usually mine are 15 characters I use different ways to do this um, so for instance I will pick a theme um, so if I like uh, the Orioles for instance I could use different special characters and words in the Orioles. Um, I, if I like um, food, I could choose different fast food restaurants and change out specific letters for special characters. Whatever the case may be, at least 15 characters long is a good place to stay right now in the real world, okay? Eight characters is just not enough anymore. Number seven, make online purchases from secure sites. Um, you'll find that some sites have the S in front of the HTTPS. If you click on the link in the URL bar, you can actually see that it stands for secure or S. If it doesn't have that, don't purchase from the site. Number eight, be careful what you post. The internet does not have a delete key. And so anybody can go back and look at what you've posted for all of time, even future employers. Just keep that in mind. And sometimes they judge you based on what they see. Number nine, be careful who you meet online. People can take advantage of you and really, really, um, if you start chat rooming with them and stuff and they ask you to meet up and things, do not do that. They have uh, bad intentions for you. Never meet with someone in person um, who tells you to from online. They could be um, 
uh, a person who will take advantage of you uh, and destroy your life, honestly, and even potentially kill you or hurt you in, in more ways than one. So just be extremely careful who you meet online. Um, you better know the person <laughs> um, or have a good relationship with them as far as in the real world before you go um, meeting someone in the yeah, no, no way. I would never go meet somebody I've never met that I just meet online. It's it's not safe in our society today. Okay, so be careful. Seriously, um, don't get taken advantage of by somebody. And then number 10, keep your antivirus protection software up to date, which is easy because usually sets itself to up to date, <laughs> to, to update automatically. All right, so these are some tips and tricks right there uh, for keeping yourself safe online and also about computer security. Hopefully this was helpful and I will see you in the next video.